Hello everybody, Sanyer, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about the next Google of genomics, looking at this threat from Biotech 2K1. I want to talk about all of that in this video. Now, before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill, like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, really does help the channel, YouTube algorithms, you know how they work. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Okay, so this thread here, I was looking at it this morning and its title has taking a look at Envite, an update look at Envite. And I thought it was fitting to make a video on Envite because I have not made a video on the company for a while. And I thought it was interesting to, uh, to look back at this company, look at the latest earnings if we have time and talk about why this company could be potentially the next Google of genomics. So let's start with trade here. Let's take a look at here. It says management. I have only been in Vita for a few months. I think Sean George is doing a great job. Sean George is the co-founder and current CEO of Invite. He has spent a lot of money over the past years to build a world class company. It is very important to build a company that is competitive. They will focus on profitability going forward. They said they will continue 40% growth for many years while focusing on margin and cash burn. They will only do acquisition if they add strong value. So we know they've done acquisitions, especially recently, not that long ago. And 40% growth is really, really good. I mean, 40% growth, I mean, you know, is subjective, right? Because you could be a $40 million revenue company and a 40% growth might not be as good as a company that's making a billion dollars revenue, right? But nonetheless, it is still relevant and still good. It's something you want to keep in mind uh, when you talk about projections. Science. This company is all about genetic uh, profiling and personalized medicine. They do all testing they do testing across all stages of life and for all type of education. They have testing for genetic diseases, fertility, and oncology, right? So we, we won't go into the specific of what this company does because I've made previous videos on Invite, what they actually offer, what they actually do, their different branches, what they're doubling down on, and what they're projecting to do in the next upcoming years. Uh, but clearly here, just genetic profiling and personalized medicine is huge, right? It's a huge market, especially with what happened in the last two years. You guys know exactly what happened with the pandemic and so on. Uh, being proactive rather than reactive has never been more popular and needed in society. And you can bet the governments are looking all sorts of ways to promote that type of mentality across their communities. So uh, what Envite is doing here is extremely novel. It's extremely... Uh, it, it is actually, you need a lot of cash uh, to get this going, right? Because you talk about data, you talk about headcount, you talk about R&D expenses. Uh, you need a lot of cash, right? You can't just be a little startup, you know, spun, spinning off open data. It doesn't work like that, okay? This is, healthcare is one of those fields that, in my opinion, uh, along with real estate, I think they're one of those sectors that will always be lagging when it comes to technology uh, because of regulations, because of red tape, because of security, because of how, I mean, you know, genomics and healthcare just as a whole, right? When you talk about human bodies, um, it's, it's, it's always more trickier to talk about changes in the human body, right? And just think about the FDA approval for any CRISPR therapy right now. I mean, it's been years and years and we still don't have any CRISPR-based therapy despite knowing the data that are coming in from CTX-001 and from other programs, for example. And it makes sense, right? You can't just make an exception for one specific tool, right? Unless unless we're in a world pandemic, which we're still in. So it is what it is. Uh, let's continue here. This is all about collecting genetic information so patients and doctors can make the best decisions. Eventually, they will have enough information where it could become a research tool as it would provide population genetics level data. Research tool being, you know, you can license this to universities, to institutions, or of course, to other companies. I think the potential is huge for this company. They've already projected sales of 650 million for 2022. This could quickly grow to over 2 billion in sales over the next five years. I think this company could become the next Google of genetic information. I find this statement to be really, really uh, interesting because, first of all, Google is no joke. Uh, actually, I just heard recently, and I, I, I 
talked about this actually maybe in a previous video, but Google actually owns like a, a little bit under 9% of SpaceX, right? So to me, Google is much more than just data at this point to a search engine, right? It's, it's like a conglomerate of like a bunch of companies under it, right? Uh, and what NVIDIA is doing here, they're starting off with the genomics data, obviously personalized medicine, that's their aim, that's their goal. Uh, but they could become a lot more than that, right? You can think of what you can do when you have all that data, right? What you can license out, what you can build partnerships for, what else you can do, acquisition, mergers, you know, what else can you spin off? I mean, these are just ideas, right? And I, But I, I do love this statement from biotech here. Value. I think Invita is just crazy cheap here at 1.73 billion market cap. They have just over $1 billion in cash. They do have 1.5 billion of convertible debt that can be converted to stock or bought back at, for cash at the company's discretion, right? So let's just focus on the billion dollars cash for now. I mean, $1 billion in cash solidifies their balance sheet for quite a while, right? For numerous years to come. And the fact they're worth like $1.7 billion market cap, to me, it is completely, completely wild that a company with this much cash in the balance sheet, you know they're expecting to grow over 40% of growth. You know they're in a field that's potentially, potentially has a, has a, 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 a path to grow 10x, 100x in the upcoming years in genomics and side of things. And you know they're, they're a significant company that has been valued in the past a lot more than what they're currently at. I think they're crazy cheap. I agree with biotech here. I totally agree with that statement. This step, this step comes due in 2028. I think they have plenty of time to be profitable before this step comes due. The company will do over 650 million sales for 2022. This puts them at less than 3x for sales. That is really cheap, and I agree with that. I think even Block, or formerly known as Square, is trading at like 4x sales. Apple's trading at 7x sales. I mean, uh, Tesla, if you look at Tesla, you look at all these, these companies, they're worth a lot more than 30x sales. And obviously, they're in different sectors, different technologies, different leaderships, different positions. Uh, but $1 billion in cash is no joke, uh, especially when you're in a high growth mode. And basically what's going to happen is they're going to find ways to spend that money over time, have a more headcount, potentially have more acquisition. If, of course, like mentioned here in this thread, if it adds value. Uh, so really good thread. I love this type of thread because it reminds us about, one, the company's position and two, where they're heading at, right? So Tony Posey here did tweet this. I'm, I'm just going to go really quick over the quickly over it and, and retweeted and VTS tweet, I missed that, right? It says, introducing personalized cancer monitoring, a tumor-informed liquid biopsy test that monitors minimal residual disease, learn more at Invite, right? So precision oncology, early cancer detection. Uh, so this is their product that they've recently introduced just like basically three days ago. To me, I think Invite is a company that is here to stay. I think what they're doing here is a high growth company that's aiming for 40 plus percent growth every single year. That is no joke. I'm um, clearly you can see the previous years they grew 65 percent from 2020 to 2021 in terms of revenue. I mean, they're shifting their basis line here in medicine and healthcare from a reactive to proactive. And this is only done by data, processing data, building these partnerships, hitting those addressable markets that are clearly in need for revolution, you know, when you talk about age, when you talk about pregnancy, when you talk about fertility, when you talk about um, cancer diseases and heart diseases, I mean, these are markets that, you know, you think about it and most um, average household income will definitely invest in that. I mean, just think about, you know, the vaccines and so on. Um, I mean, people are gonna get it even if they don't necessarily quote unquote need it, right? And this is because of the mentality of being biosecure, right? Being proactive rather than reactive. So I truly believe this company is to stay. They have a strong balance sheet. Their expenses look sort of reasonable here. If you take a look at here, their gross margin here, 24% from gap here. Non-gap is 36% for 2021. I'm just gonna look at the gap figure because non-gap obviously most you know analysts don't. Uh, like using that term, whatever, I'll just stick with this. Almost 25% gross margin is significant, and it is a software company in the genomic side of things. They're building these types of partnerships, having more patients enroll 
in their company. I think it is extremely interesting what they're doing. I mean, we saw their partnership, I believe, with Teladoc. Uh, so it's all about that genomic side of things that you know are tying together and sort of positioning themselves for a skyrocket type of growth. Now, obviously, we're still in a bear market. We're still in the longest bear market, biotech. Uh, so you can't just single out this company being down 75, 80% from its all-time highs in early 2021. But it is what it is. I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this company. Let me know in the comments below. Like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you've not. And do let me know what you guys think about Envite and if they can be the next Google of genomics. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful Sunday. Thank you.